Welcome to this radio video and this is a video to explain types of propagation and also show you a great website where you can learn more and see in real time how propagation and the types of propagation that you have around your area or around the world. So the website is dxmaps.com so just type www.dxmaps.com I'll put this website in the video. Uh, comments so that you can click on it. Now, dxmaps.com is a great website to see propagation conditions around the world. The way it works at the left, you've got map or list, you've got LF, HF, which is for shortwave, so long wave to shortwave is covered here, and you see the bands at the top from 2200 meters, which is uh, something like you know 50 kilohertz or really really low fre frequencies in the long wave band to all the way up to 10 meters which is 28 megahertz amateur radio band now these are amateur radio bands but you can of course use them to you know understand propagation of international broadcast bands for example an example of that is if I want to know that is uh, 21 megahertz or 13 meters open well, I can click the 15 meters amateur radio band, which is also in the 21 megahertz, and check the map for signals. And you see all these lines are signals showing you that, okay, the east coast, northeast coast of North America, so that's close to me, seems to have lots of uh, contacts with Europe. So you know that these conditions are open. You know that signals propagate from that region to another. Of course, you can get these maps even closer. You have the world map, but for example, I will use the North America map. I can click North America at the top and get the map for my, um, you know, closer to my region if you want. Now, of course, North America is quite big, so I'll tend to check signals that are very close to me, uh, meaning here is close to me in Montreal, which is South Quebec here on the northeast part of the map. But it's a great way to understand propagation, how it works, and understand which um, part of the world is actually working on what band or frequency. If I, for example, go into 80 meters for North America, you'll see that there's no signal. Why? 80 meters in the middle of summer at this time of day is pretty much uh, zero. There won't be much contacts there. So it shows you the map, tells you kind of, you know, no propagation there. So you got the different uh, amateur radio bands. You can use that as a, you know, as a way of knowing which bands are open and to what area of the world. And also uh, give you an idea of the types of propagation. Because if you look at signals, for example, I'll click 10 meters, which is 28 megahertz. You've noticed that all these have colors. If you look at the, the lines, there's blue lines, red lines, pink lines, all sorts of lines. Now these indicate types of propagation. Um, to make it as simple as possible, usual propagation on shortwave or on HF is simply uh, D layer, F layers in the upper atmosphere, the ionosphere that would we call uh, the reason why, for example, 6 megahertz is not propagating in the middle of the day is because the D layer absorbs these frequencies, these low frequencies. But high frequencies like 17 megahertz go through the D layer all the way up to the F layer. And actually in the, in the daytime, the F layer is separated in two layers, F1, F2. And the higher frequency you go, the higher the signal will actually... Um, reflect. That's why higher frequencies tend to make it easier for long distance propagation because the hops are much bigger. And uh, in reverse, in the night time, the reason why 6 megahertz is just so crowded and you know 17 megahertz pretty much empty is because in the night time um, all these layers actually kind of uh, matched together in one layer which is a single F layer in the nighttime which propagates very well signals on the 6 megahertz and the F layer 
is uh, since the D layer is missing, there's no absorption of the low frequencies. That's why propagation on low frequencies are good at night. And the F layer, when it's very, very ionized, uh, in the case of high solar activity, for example, can you know propagate signals uh, quite high in frequency, actually. So that's why you can hear um, uh, Australia, for example, I heard many years, Australia, in the middle of the night on 21740, um, even though it was midnight or 1 a.m. and the sun's gone for a while, um, y you could still hear some signals on high frequencies. But, you know, it depends on a lot of factors, including the season you are. Uh, it's not the same propagation uh, in the summer, in the winter, um, due to the angle of the sun. The ionization is not as strong in winter uh, f to support higher frequencies, for example, stuff like that. Now, if you look at the colors on the map, at the bottom you have that little chart here that gives you colors and tells you the type of propagation that you have. Multi-op, e-skip, e-sporadic, e-skip, stuff like that. There are very, very different types of propagation that can happen depending on what's happening. For example, say there's a big um, coronal mass ejection from the sun, reaches Earth. We have the aurora borealis and very strong geomagnetic storms. Well, you might see these little greenish type signals here show up on certain frequencies because it's going to tell you aurora is actually propagating that frequency. Now these usually are more for higher frequencies but it gives you an idea of how, how different types of signals can propagate. EME is Earth, Moon, Earth. This is typically in very high frequencies in amateur radio. Sporadic E is what will probably be the most interesting for a lot of people, uh, especially in the summertime. For example, here now, we are late June in Montreal. Sporadic E is in full swing. Uh, there's no real consensus as to what makes sporadic E uh, patches appear. Sporadic E is patches of very, very strongly ionized uh, ionosphere that propagate signals, very high frequency signals. A lot of people use them to actually listen to FMDX, for example. So uh, summertime is a good time and usually you'll notice if you look at weather maps and sporadic E, there's a lot of things going on that kind of show you that when a front, for example, is passing by and there's lots of thunderstorm activity, usually you'll notice that the uh, sporadic E patches are close to the front. So it seems to be linked to the weather. And the reason we have it more in the wind and the summer, sorry, is exactly because of that. Summer, warm weather gives more thunderstorms and so on. Increases the chance of sporadic E. But there are some patches in winter. But I've actually never heard sporadic E in winter here. Um, I've heard sporadic E very often in the summertime. And actually, uh, in the next few days here, we're going to have like temperatures of 30, 31 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's very hot and uh, there's going to be thunderstorms and stuff like that. So sporadic E might be interesting here. So these are all things to check for, and um, if you look on this website, you also can, uh, if you are a scanner buff, check VHF and up, and see all the propagation of 50 megahertz. For example, I often check 50 megahertz. It's one of the bands that I love. It's one of the surprising bands on what you can hear, and so on. You can check that. If you want to do FMDXing, you can click FMDX, and it's going to give you some uh, idea if FMDX is possible. There's nothing here, so doesn't seem to be happening here. But of course, you can check your area. If you're in Europe, you'll click Europe and check FMDX for Europe and so on. Here it says FMDX is possible, so you can check it out here. And uh, these are kind of pinkish, so it gives you an idea that this is sporadic E in action in Europe. If you want to learn more, you can click on the map and have in detail uh, a list of the stations heard and from where to where and so on and 
megahertz. So it gives you an idea of sporadic E and the frequencies you see here. There's some 195 megahertz, 97 megahertz, 100 megahertz propagating. So these are all interesting features that can, you can check for propagation. So go to dxmaps.com, check uh, the maps slowly, uh, click your area of the world. You can click the world map if you want and just check the general world map and look at the different types of propagation, what you can hear, what frequencies are actually working at uh, any time of day, uh, which is also quite cool. And um, this is probably one of the major, major websites that I use. One thing that you can check also if you look in the VHF and, UA and up um, frequency, you'll see that there's something called MUF eSkip. So if you're wondering if there's eSkip, you can check for MUF eSkip and it's going to tell you sporadic E what is the highest uh, typical frequency for sporadic E. So here for example in North America we seem to have some and you see these little numbers 52, 60, 53 megahertz. These are highest frequency supported by sporadic E at this time. So uh, lots of stuff to learn here. Check it out. The map automatically refreshes every few minutes. So if you are on a map um, and you leave it there, you'll see that it refresh regularly. And so great, great website, dxmaps.com. Use them, check that out. Check out which bands are open to your area your area of the world. If you're wondering if propagation is dead on a certain band, well, check it out here and look if there are some contacts and it's going to let you know if it's dead or if it's full of signals. So, for example, I noticed that 15 meters is open to Europe. So, of course, after this video, I'm going to tune 21 megahertz a little bit. Check out which stations I can hear from Europe. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and that you maybe learned a little more on propagation conditions, learned how to uh, you know go through these maps, learn a little bit more on propagation itself with these maps. And uh, hopefully, if you didn't know this website existed, great place to go to check for propagation. So hope you enjoyed the videos and uh, good DX73.